So level three nutrition is not just about understanding the food that we consume and how much of that we need to be consuming, but it's also about what happens to it when it enters the body, what actually goes on once we've eaten it. So you would have come across ATP before, this is adenosine, so one molecule of adenosine and three lots of phosphate, so adenosine triphosphate. Now, this is important to know about and you'll know about it from your anatomy and physiology anyway, but what we're aiming for is that when we want energy, this P gets separated. So when this bond gets broken, we then have this little energy, little spark that happens. Now, in order to create more energy or more ATP, so we can do this over and over again, we then have our three different ways of being able to make ATP. You guys know that that already comes from aerobic and anaerobic. Now, that anaerobic, again, is split into lactic acid and into creatine phosphate. That's just a little bit of background. Just make sure we're all on the same page. What I'm really kind of talking about today is about uh, carbs and fats and how the things that we use on a daily basis, or things that we eat on a daily basis, should I say, um, create this ATP. Where does it actually go and how is it even remotely useful for us? So, first of all, carbs. This is our main fuel source. That's because we can turn carbs into ATP really easily. So that's really easy for us to do, which means we end up with an abundance of ATP available to us. Now, this, that's all well and good as long as you are consuming carbs. So just be mindful when you're working with your clients that you're not suggesting low carbohydrate when this is their main fuel source. Remember, for physical activity, carbohydrates is really, really important to have extra of these ATPs hanging around. Where they get this carb source from is almost neither here nor there in relation to just energy systems itself. So you might go fruit and veg, you might go down the route of rice, potatoes, bread, whatever um, is appropriate in relation to um, the macronutrient, but then you'll look at it and analyse it in relation to micronutrients in particular. So these carbs, basically we know we can get that and convert it using aerobic and also using anaerobic um, energy systems. So we can convert that carb via aerobic and anaerobic into ATP. We know that that can happen, okay? Now fats, we know fats only come from aerobic and that all happens in that mitochondria. So if it's aerobic, these two, then that all happens in the wonderful little machine called the mitochondria. They create it into ATP. Fab. So again, fats are really important and they're pretty easy to turn into ATP, but we don't get as many of them per molecule as we do for carbs. So carbs are the most efficient, fats are next in line, protein really inefficient at being able or inefficient should i say at being able to create us lots of atp doesn't create us lots it creates us a little bit and that's because it can't just convert it straight away to atp like it has been doing with these other two it's first got to convert it into a fat or a carb and that actually is a little bit of a long-winded process for it to go through. You don't need to know the ins and outs of that necessarily. It's good just to know that's a long-winded process for that protein to go via fats and carbs in order to create the ATP. Now, when this happens, that means that people that are on, say, let's say someone's on a high-protein, <laughs> high-fat diet with very low carbs. Now, that's okay. That kind of can be achievable just in kind of aerobic state. That can kind of happen. But if they're wanting to go anaerobic, they need some carbs in their system. So let's combine that with a HIIT session. They're doing this HIIT session and they are trying to access anaerobic, but they're running out of fuel. Now, the only fuel they need for that anaerobic is going to be carbs. So if you're not getting a balanced diet for your clients, then they're going to really struggle at being able to get the output of exercise that you require in relation to the RPE that you're aiming at, that intensity that you want them to get to. So really, that's my big message today is that when you're thinking about energy and you're thinking about your, what your client's doing on a session, think about the food that you're giving them as well. And that actually, carbohydrates are really important in relation to that. So that's my message for today. Um, hit like, put a little thumbs up on, on YouTube as well and pop a little comment below so I know what you thought of it. Have a great day and happy revising.